I'm with Neil Carter of Okanagan Specialty Fruits from British Columbia, the developer of the Arctic Apple, the non-browning genetically modified apple. Neil, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your product? Sure. Arctic apples are an apple where we've uh, turned off the enzyme that drives the browning re reaction. So these apples won't get enzymatic browning. So when you slice them or cut them, bite into them and leave them for a while, they don't turn brown. And where do you stand with regulatory approval of this product? In the United States, are, we're um, just coming upon the second public comment period, so the expectation is that'll happen sometime in May, and uh, that'll run for 30 days, and uh, so by the end of June that should wrap up, and with the intent to be finished by the end of this year, we're told the third quarter of this year we should be done. Now, which are the varieties of apples that you've applied this trait to? So, so far, the, in the regulatory process, this has been uh, with an, uh, a Golden Delicious and a Granny Smith, and the plans are to continue with other varieties afterwards. Yeah. Why did you pick those two varieties to start? Well, I think the, um, you know, a couple of reasons. One, they were first out of our, our development uh, sort of activities, but in the, so they were in the ground and we had the most regulatory data on that. But also, uh, you know, a yellow apple and a green apple or a sweet apple and a tart apple are basically are always part of the mix in the apple business at retail and in processing. What do you see as the initial commercial market for these products once you have the regulatory approvals in place? Well, we're out t right now you know, talking to a lot of uh, commercial parties, uh, growers, packers, shippers, and processors, and there's a lot of interest. Um, but I think the, 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 real, the real target for us is uh, fresh cut, so on, and apples that are sliced and uh, put in a bag and, and made convenient to eat. And we're hoping that that's going to help address some of the uh, loss in consumption. You know, we, we struggle. Our apple consumption has declined over the last 25 years, and maybe this allowed us to get some of that back. Do you see an international, obviously you have an international market since you're starting in Canada and going into the U.S. anyway, but uh, beyond that, what's the international picture? Well, you know, it's a, the international market's complicated. Any genetically modified crop going outside of North America has, has you know, certainly had headaches to deal with, um, but we're, we have a, a real interest to take our Arctic apples into, uh, into uh, South Africa as well as China and likely Mexico and hopefully into South America as well. And the, the orchard industry, the apple industry, has a lot of other challenges. Uh, what do you see as products that you have in the pipeline using this type of technology? Yeah, we like to think we're just getting started. You know, <laughs> we've been in business for 16 years, but we're still just getting started. And um, this year we're ramping up our, our research and uh, initiatives to address apple scab and uh, fire blight resistance, as well as storage scald. So three more agronomic traits that we would combine with the non-browning, as we like to call that, Arctic Plus. So this would actually relieve the need to use antibiotics in apple production? Yeah, fire, you know, there are various control tools for fire blight, but probably the dominant uh, approach is to use an antibiotic uh, during bloom to kill the uh, bacterium associated with fire blight. And uh, we, you know, the idea is to be able to get rid of that, the need for that. So realistically, when do you think the first apples will hit the market? Um, the fall of 2015. That's, my, that's the date we're setting. Well, good luck with that. This is uh, Richard Lobb with Neil Carter of Okanagan Specialty Fruits.